good morning party people I'm talking quietly because um this is the first time I'm vlogging now my boyfriend is back in my flat for a couple of months to ride out yet another covid spike um so trying to get used to vlogging with someone else in the house I'm sure all my friends watching this um are laughing at the thought of him in the other room listening but anyway the vlog must go on I'm putting on some makeup for the first time in the week. It is Thursday. It is also the morning after the night before um, the Booker Prize was announced last night. I tuned in to Kieran's Live, which was so much fun. And then myself, Jay, CJ, and Kieran were chatting for a long time afterwards and having a jolly old time. Um, so that was actually so fun. Obviously, we were all really disappointed because. I think we were, we were all wanted um, real life and Kieran would have been happy with real life but he wanted burnt sugar. I was sort of the opposite, I wanted real life but I, I really thought burnt sugar was going to win. And if you haven't seen, which you would have because it's up in like a week, um, Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart won, which I haven't read. I don't know if I will read to be honest, mostly because it's just a bit sad, too sad for me. It's about an alcoholic mother. Um, and her son in Glasgow in Thatcher era, Scotland. Um, from everyone's scathing reviews, which was really funny because the only person who had read it was Kieran, um, out of the five of us, that um, it's quite commercial. So I don't know, my boyfriend's keen to read it, but I probably will give it a pass and I definitely won't be paying £17 for the hardback. But yeah, I'm disappointed. I thought this was the year they were gonna make up for the absolute train wreck that was um, making Burnley every so share, but apparently not. Um, so yeah, that was a fun last night. Besides that, I've just been getting on with uni. Um, like I said, my boyfriend's here, but he's quarantining for two weeks. I think he's done a week now. So he's obviously got pretty bad cabin fever. I just hate the way this outfit looks for god's sake. I'm just basically wearing a jumpsuit with a collar but I'm too cold to wear my arms out. But I'm putting on makeup because it's a work day. I definitely said it was Thursday and it's Friday because I normally work on Thursday. Um, but I'm going to work today. I've got some uni work to do which I'm sure you will all see a time lapse off and um, the weekend will be filled with swimming, application writing and pastries probably and maybe some exercise I feel like an actual blob at the moment um but what you actually tuned into is to find out what books I'm reading am I really backlit here is this better oh lols you can see my teddy bear just move her out the way so I am a fully grown woman. Um, I used to my washer, that's nice. And the best thing about having my boyfriend at home is he is the he is the man who provides the tea at all occasions. Anyway, I'll tell you what I'm reading. I am honestly haven't been reading a lot. I've been really tired and we're also doing a Wes Anderson marathon for lockdown 2.0 so we've been doing that in the evenings and then I've just been really caught up with like tv weirdly the crown came back on I'm a crown hun obviously not a royalist don't agree with the monarchy but love a bit of drama love the costumes and this um current season is with princess diana which then off the back of this season being released there's then like two um two like mini series also like one with interviews of Diana and one all about like the Martin Bashir like drama that happened so yeah got a lot of Diana content to catch up on but what I'm reading is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson this is a proof that came in from Penguin um published by Viking their imprint and it is so beautiful guys it's so short it's a story of two so I should say Kayla was zooming out since uh, debut author and this comes out in February but it's a story of these two characters you can kind of see on the front um two black British millennials um both working in the arts 
falling in love in less than perfect circumstances and um, muddling their way through a non-relationship relationship. It is so beautifully written, very lyrical. Um, he's playing with a lot of different literary devices, repetition, um, you're very poetic. It's just stunning. I've earmarked so many pages, but yeah, I probably want to finish it at the weekend. I'm just really slow at the moment of reading. I've read like the first two pages of Whites, which I spoke about in my last video. But when I finish that, I will wrap it up. In terms of audiobooks, I'm still listening to We Need New Stories. And then I'm re listening to the new, the third one in the So Far trilogy, but I, I'm not sure how many um, Jessica Townsend's planning on writing of um, Nevermore and the Morgan Gro Crow world. So the third one is called Hollypox. I'm really enjoying it so far. It's just very soothing. And it's like 14 hours, which I love a long middle grade fantasy. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my reading update. I will take you around for the next few days. Um, and share with you what I'm doing. There should be some books coming in the post, which is exciting. And um, Kieran and I are doing like a fun challenge thing, which I'm sure I'll put a separate video up about, but um, maybe his book will arrive while I'm here. This is my first time vlogging with my boyfriend in the room and I'm getting really embarrassed. But anyway, I've just come back from the bulk food shop. As you saw, it was very wet and rainy. Um, may need to stock up on tea because there was no tea left in the flat and I needed more. But I also got loads of sweet treats because it's just a grim time out there. So I'm just refilling them into jars right now. So I just don't remember getting this quantity of stuff. But This is, these are caramelised almonds, they're so Christmassy. Oh my god, delicious. And I'm going to make like a treat, treat jar of semi-healthiness. Three shred raspberry balls. This is the booziest jar of chocolate ever. I'm obviously going to try one every time I put them in. These new vegan chocolate pralines they had. Oh my god. They're amazing. And dark chocolate midday dates. Also amazing. My work for the day just got cancelled because the little boy, one of the children I looked after, is awaiting a COVID test, so that's pretty crap. But there's my new jar of deliciousness. I also bought a huge bag of hot chilli cashews, which I'm not going to eat right now because I just got this chocolate in my mouth. But yeah, that was the excitement of my trip out and I went to the post office and I listened to my audiobook, which is really great. It's talking about the myth of identity politics. And I've got a free afternoon I didn't know I was going to have. So I'm going to work on my CV and probably get ahead with next week's university. 
catch up with you guys when I read some more. exchange student locker morning folks it is so gross outside but i'm going to the bakery because i've got no bread and i really want coffee cinnamon buns and a loaf of bread um what did i do last night I keep i haven't really been doing reading because i keep being caught up in the group chat with grace and cj and everyone and it's actually stopping my reading so but cottage is not helping me right now um, but I did do loads of annotating of uh, challenge, uh, We Need New Stories, Challenging the Myths of the Toxic Age. It was so good. I was reading all about identity politics and then this chapter on like <laughs> memorialising people and it was so relevant considering Barack Obama's memoir just came out and there's this whole thing about, I'll try and put a clip on actually of Barack Obama and his the way he was portrayed in like youth culture while also like participating in bombing youths um, across the Middle East. Um, that was really interesting. But yeah, I'll show you when I get cake. coming at you from the car because guys I just can't get, get used to vlogging it's my boyfriend in the house yeah it's really bad I just spent 20 pounds on light bulbs hey being an adult it's so depressing but anyway I came in here I'm on an errand run to buy light bulbs but I also picked up some post on the way out I don't I think I know this isn't a book but it is more stationary and then I also do have a book from put that on the back seat which is literally my jumping ground from the completest who is like one of my favorite stationery brands i showed them in a vlog a couple of you guys commented that you really like them and my to-do list writing habit is getting out of hand so i got two new to-do lists i'm actually going to give this one to my boyfriend because since we've been home having a few rows about um me asking to do stuff and he doesn't do it and then he forgets so I was like I'll buy him a to-do list and that would be really passive aggressive but also he'll stop forgetting to do things I ask him to do um so I'll probably give him this one and I've got this cute one and yeah that's nice and then another exciting thing that came in the post is my second hand copy of by Grand Central Station I sit, sit down and wept this I bought for the lovely Kieran and Katie Books is running a book club in December and this is what we're going to read. I was on board because A, it's this short. Um, I got it on eBay for like three quid, which is amazing. It's a really cool cover. And also, as you guys know, I love Dolly Alderton and Pandora Sykes and this is one of Dolly's, has reference. this is one of her favourite books before. So I feel like it would be a good one. It's an old book, which I am not a big reader of, as we know. But... Oh my god, when it first came out, it cost £3.99. That's actually mad. But yeah, I'm excited to do this. Kieran's running a book club on Discord. I've never used Discord. He promised he'll show me how it works. But yeah, that's exciting. And the last thing is that I'm on my way to post some more books on BookSwap, which I got, I told you guys about before. This great hunk of a thing is um, How Not to Die by like Michael Greger. It's like one of those culty vegan books I read a long time ago. Um, which I have no use for anymore. Not because I'm not vegan, just because I don't really subscribe to the, to like health. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's a video for another day. But yeah, I just don't really read those kind of books anymore. And then this is my boyfriend's copy of The Shadow King, which he read 
um, just before he got here and finished it and then was like, oh, two stars, didn't rate it. Interesting, controversial, maybe not. Um, so I put it on Bookswap for him because I knew it would go really quickly. I had no intention of reading it and then when a book comes up that he wants, he can um, get that. So I will link Bookswap down below again because I love what they're doing. So I'm off to post those and then I'm off for a swim which you will hopefully see a clip of if um, my friend and I are not um, gasping in the freezing cold. So yeah, I'll chat to you guys later. Hi guys, I don't know if this is a very good angle, but I'm in my bedroom, literally on my bed where I've been for like the past four hours, it's now pitch black. Um, I rinsed the last three episodes of The Crown, very angry, obviously, because Princess Diana is bae and they hate Prince Charles and he was so horrible and I can't believe he even, like I, I can't even believe they got married basically, but anyway, now I just have the documentary stuff to watch and I'm almost done. I have like 20 pages left of open water. Guys, this is a debut you need to pre-order. It is out in February and for fans of, I guess like poetic prose, like anyone who likes Ocean Vong or Saheed Jones's memoir, like that sort of like super lyrical, beautiful, you could probably pick it apart and call it overwrought, but nothing's too overwrought for me when it comes to Tales of Love, um, it's just so beautiful and I admire Nelson's ability to talk about such hypervigilant topics like um, police brutality and um, stop and search and things like that in like a very vulnerable and candid way and tying it all back to love um, and just honestly I'm finding it really really sad because I think it's just I'm constantly thinking about how I can't imagine my life being up for debate or like I can't imagine the experience of thinking that you're going about your everyday life and you want to fall in love but in the back of your head you're thinking I could get stopped today and that could be the end of my life and um, obviously that's quite crass to think of it like that but the way it's portrayed in the book of this young black couple is he is thinking to himself like it's taking over his mind, he's having nightmares of, of being locked up or being um, brutalised by the police and I just think it's a very stark reminder of the privilege that white skin carries and how fucked up that is. But yeah, I would honestly love everyone to pre-order this. It's so, so, so beautiful. I'm going to put some excerpts up on my Instagram because I feel like maybe the writing won't be for everyone, but it's certainly for me. Um, oh yeah, fans of like real life. But maybe actually if you didn't like real life, it's not as um, it's not as overwrought as that. I use overall as a compliment because I like, when people seem to say that about writing, that seems to be the kind of writing I like. Um, but yeah, very, very sombering reading. Um, so I'll finish that tonight and then we can choose something new tomorrow. And I'm gonna have a talk up tomorrow about sort of like my reading plans for the rest of the year and what I'm envisioning because I'm just feeling I'm sure like most people like very burnt out um with life um and the uncertainty of what's gonna happen so I don't think I'm gonna make any more TBR videos this year I think I'm just gonna read the proofs that I have that are like coming up for release and then see what else takes me I really want to get out of this mindset of reading like consistently reading a lot of books but not that makes it sound like a bad thing but like I can get caught up with being like oh I started this book this week I've got to finish it this week whatever um I think this will be my hundredth book of the year which I mean there's absolutely no need to read in excess to be a reader but I feel like I could really get stuck into like a slow story maybe or just like not even a slow story but like a chunky story that um will hold my attention so I'm eyeing up a couple of those ones I put on my like top of my TBR video like white teeth or Chris Adoria. Um, so yeah.
uh, you guys won't see this, I would have picked one by the time this is out, but um, yeah, that's all I have to say. I'm gonna finish watching the Isle of Dogs. Boyfriend's watching the football, if you can hear that. And then I will uh, see what Sunday brings. Around the I just finished this and it was so phenomenal. I don't really have the words to describe it right now, but I'm going to choose something from my shelves to read next. Mm -hmm. I actually really don't know what to pick. On my list for the end of the year was white tea. Chris Adoria. I actually can't even remember what else I put on my list. I think I've read. I put Jillian on there, which I've already read. Oh, Crazy Rich A. Oh, maybe I'm gonna read this. Maybe I just want some like some fun in my life. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm gonna give this a go actually. I'm all set up on a tripod. Um, I'm gonna film a quick video for Nonfiction November about essay collections, but I thought I would just tell you about my actual vlog reading. As you saw, I've been in bed. Um, I feel really rough. I think I've got sinusitis, like such a bad headache in between my eyes, but like only now am I developing like the coldy symptoms that go with it. It's not COVID, I know that because I've been tested, but um, I, have powered through Crazy Rich Asians. I started last night and I think, yeah, I've read 200 pages and it's about 400 pages. I don't know the last time I read a 400 page book. So like, this is pretty incredible for me and it's just perfect. Like it's actually just what I wanted. Um, it's completely absurd. Um, and the writing is very, sorry, I just realized the lighting's quite bad. Maybe this is better. Um, it's very, wordy i can't really think of a more intellectual way to put it but like you know it's like overly descriptive and it's like he did this and she did that and da, da, da. but and normally that would really jar me but i think because i went into it looking for something like complete and utter escapism and like just to switch off my brain and not have to think about the allegories and the symbolism and the meanings like it was it's just really nice um so yeah, I forgot what it feels like to be like swept up in a plot. So I probably will finish this like today or tomorrow, depending on how my university work gets on. Um, I didn't go for a swim because like I said, I think I've got a sinus issue. Um, but I'll probably, I really want to go and take a photo for my open water review. And obviously we'll have to go down to the open water to do that. So I might show you a bit of the beach and pick up a coffee on the way. It's just a bit boring because obviously my boyfriend can't come out with me at the moment. So... I'm very inspired to go walking, but anyway, I'm going to film my essay collection video um, and then I'll see what else I get up to. I'm coming at you to say I've done no reading today because I've been working on this piece of writing about... <laughs> That's what it's about, actually. No, about gender and toxic masculinity in the primary school classroom, but I did read an amazing article or journal about um, boysplaining, which is the small child version of mansplaining, um, which is blowing my mind, and now I can't stop thinking about it. So that's really interesting, um, which also brings me to the point, because mansplaining was coined by Rebecca Solnit, I've read, t I've read men explain things to me, obviously, and then... I read Call Them By Their True Names, but I, like, didn't love it. Um, and then I listened to Men Explain Things To Me, and I also didn't love it, but I think that's because I listened to it on audio. But I feel like I will like Rebecca Solnit's essays, um, not just from an academic point of view, just because I think she's really interesting. So if anyone has read anything else by her, please leave your Rebecca Solnit recommendations down below. My dishwasher wouldn't drain, so I spent, like, an hour trying to sort that out and I'm not sure it's even fixed and I'm making Marmite roast potatoes for dinner that's the only update haven't read any more of Crazy Rich Asians but when I do finish it I'll tell you happy Monday to everyone except 
Kevin Kwan, who uses the N-word in his books, even though he is not a black person. Guys, this is why I can't read trash books or like escapist books because fucking authors do stuff like that. I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed I was having such a good time. And then I don't want to put the, I don't want to read it obviously and I don't really want to put the page in because I don't want to trigger anyone. But I did mark it if anyone's concerned. It is page. It's this first page of chapter nine. And the scene is basically this a really annoying character arrives in his private jet and like impersonates a rapper and says like Woo, what's up beep we're in Macau which is like a, a town in China and then I was like obviously extremely disappointed couldn't really find anything online if he was saying this even though this was an Oprah book club book um wasn't written that long ago and then I kept reading and then a few pages in there was an anti-semitic joke well I'm not even a joke but just like a comment about like Jewish people and money which obviously is not okay and then four pages after that there was a joke about gang rape which it's a very jokey joke like it's about like you'll look like a vegetable that's been gang raped but like, I just really I, this isn't like an offensive thing but I just really don't see the need for talking about gang rape in a book unless you're talking about gang rape um because i just don't think it's anything even if you're gonna joke about a vegetable and a fruit doing it i just don't think it's ever okay because a that's really triggering for someone and b it's just i don't want to read that you know i don't want to read those words um so yeah I'm, i mean i'm gonna finish it i only have like this bit left but I need to talk to my friends on Bookster because people love him like all different people I follow love him I had so many messages from people being like oh my god like such a fun series like such good escapism da, 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 da. and now I'm like did we all did you all miss the bit where he said the n-word I don't know I'm pissed off um it's Monday I have my worst class of the week I'm wearing another cream knitted sweatshirt i have many i like this neck on this one it's very big um and i'm gonna attend my online class and i've got baked oats in the oven and then i'll probably get back to you honestly when i finish this book and start a new one hi guys i haven't updated you my reading i finished crazy rich agents and posted a roasting of it which got so much good feedback so i was really happy about that i'll post the link below then i put a vote on my instagram and started pizza girl by jean young frazier it's like about an unnamed pregnant 18 year old who works at a pizza shop it is making me want pizza so badly but i've only read like 20 pages i don't have it with me but i finished whites on race and other falsehoods which was i don't know <laughs> mind-blowing fantastic extremely damning extremely confronting i will wrap it up properly and like put in some quotes and stuff because i want to do it justice but i have so much post to show you and i think a lot of it is um book posts it's really exciting so first off i got a copy of summer water by sarah moss i got this on bookswap which i posted to you before from zosha um it was like her copy um and she's at self shelf obsessed i think i'll put her thing down below so i love her bookstagram page and it's actually a proof copy but i don't really care i love sarah moss's um books i loved ghost Falls so much i listened to an audio one summer she writes quite short books and this is set in scotland in the summer at a holiday camp sort of like caravan park sort of thing and i know it's like interconnected little vignettes about 12 different people and she writes tension so well um, I think it's a lot about Brexit, about the referendum, about the hostile environment, all things like that. So I know I'm going to love this one. I just want to get through my backlist before I pick this up. Um, this one, it doesn't say who sent it. Let's see. Oh my God. It is a copy of Melissa Broder's Milk Fed. CJ read this and posted a review. It came out in, or she got approved actually as well. That was 
that's what the cover's gonna look like. And Melissa Broder wrote The Pisces, which I didn't read, but I know a lot of people love. I think she's a pretty wacky writer, but I was really intrigued by this premise because um, CJ said it focused a lot on uh, like food, disordered eating, that sort of thing. So I'm keen to get this one. Also love the pink cover. Um, what is in here? Oh, this isn't fun. This is my boyfriend's copy of Visioning and Mikamau Humanities, Indigenizing the Academy. Um, that's a book for his PhD. We're not that excited about that. And then in here is a parcel from Fourth Estate, which they messaged me asking for my email, um, for my address. So Oh my goodness, let's see what's inside. Guys, this is so on brand. Iconic. We do hate men in this house, that's for sure. I got an I hate men t-shirt, an I hate men flag, an I hate men pin. Oh my god, cute. Um, and some sick quotes. Having relationships with men is something we don't owe them. So this is a copy of, you guessed it, I Hate Men, um, which I, is by Pauline Harmage. Oh, it's a finished copy, sick. Um, so it's an essay and I believe it's the one everyone's talking about that it was banned in France. Um, yeah, the feminist book they tried to ban. I Hate Men is her first book, an attempt to sub, it was subject to censorship attempt by the advisor in France in 2020. She's a French writer and it's an essay, I'm guessing, about the fucking patriarchy. We love that. This is my first like real like press package I was asked to like that they asked to send me. So that's that's a big hype, that's really exciting. Um obviously I will read and review this and big it up because I do hate men and I can't wait to uh, share the hate with all of you. I'm obviously joking, please don't come to me in the comments. I love all my male viewers, love you Tara and love you Jalen. Um, but yeah, that's exciting. So I think I'm going to close the blog here, to be honest, because as cheery as I seem, I'm having a rough week, I feel really unwell, I've got more blood tests coming, um, so I literally get out of bed for like four hours a day and then crawl back inside. But um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I love doing these vlogs, um, so I will be sure to put up another one.